Hey guys, and today on Quick P, we are going to be covering laser bouncing kind of stuff, bouncing ray casting. So here's a little demonstration. You can see that, um, well, it's hard to tell 100% that it's working in the way that you want it to, um, but you can see at least in the first few hits, it bounces correctly. Uh, I aim here, it goes down, then it goes back up, then it goes here, and then it curves up. Um, so it's bouncing off the walls correctly. It's just like, you know, it happens so quickly that you couldn't really look at every path that it took. Um, and know for sure, but it seems reasonable, and I, I know it's reasonable mathematically. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of hard to track. I guess if I made it solid, you would be able to see it better. But anyway, so today on QuickP, this is what we're doing. We are doing uh, ray casting with bouncing, and it's going to be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and hop right into the beginning of it. There's a little bit of math involved, but not too bad. So first, you want to get your starter pack out, or whatever pack you already have set up. You want to rename it to something that makes sense. Okay, so once you have the starter pack, you want to delete all the unnecessary files, change the load in tick.json uh, to the proper values. I'm assuming you're probably going to do this in a pack you already have, but this is the pack that I'll be having in the download link in the description. Um, and then just some future proofing. This is made in 1.16. It probably works in many other versions. Um, I'll probably update it if it doesn't work. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is we need a way to click and fire. So we need to do scoreboard objectives, add, click, minecraft.used, minecraft.carrot on a stick. Okay, so that's a classic way to detect the right click. All right, and then we need one more scoreboard to hold information about the raycast. So scoreboard objectives, add, raycast, dummy, and it's just holding information, so it's a dummy. And we put this in the init function. The main function, you have to do execute as at a scores equals click equals one at at s run function. And then bounces the namespace here. And we'll do uh, begin. I'd assume that you probably have a subfolder if you were doing this um, in your data pack. You'd have a subfolder for raycasting and you would put this in a subfolder. Um, but I'll just say begin. Or maybe I'll do a subfolder anyways. Raycast begin okay and then this is where it starts and then we're going to need three functions here we need begin loop and bounce okay so begin is like before the raycast starts loop is going to be the actual raycasting thing the thing that's moving and playing commands at each position and bounce is going to be what happens when we hit a wall okay so in begin we're going to need to do scoreboard players set at s click zero so it doesn't spam and then we have to do some inf stuff so we have to do scoreboard players set percent range and i use percent because it doesn't turn up red in my syntax highlighter and it's a special character name so you cannot use this name as a player um, so somebody can't join your world with the name of percent range it won't happen all right so we'll set the range to 50 so we'll raycast 50 times if it can um, and then let's just do function bounce raycast slash loop okay and then in the raycast loop we're going to set up a basic raycast here so we're going to do execute positioned 0.25 and I'm using 0.25 because you want to basically like check when it hits a block 0.5 should be sufficient enough but I'll do 25 to be more accurate um, and you're checking if the block that's there is air and running it and we'll add a modifier of if score percent range raycast matches one or greater and each loop we will do remove one from the range And we will also do a particle. So let's do a particle of dust with R of one, G of zero, B of zero, hue size of one, and then uh, zero, zero right here, and zero, zero, zero for the DX, DY, DZ, speed of zero, count of one, and boom. All right, so we're gonna reload. We're gonna do data pack disable test, data pack enable file slash file slash ray bounce. Okay, so now when I right click, it will shoot a ray out of my feet. So to get it out of the head, uh, there's a couple different methods. I'm just going to do position, so execute. Uh, I'm just going to do it in the main function to move it upwards. So positioned 1.5. Before we play the begin, 
now everything will be shifted upwards to my eyes. But as you can see, when it hits the glass, it just stops moving, that's all. And we can put Raycast on the side. You can see it like stops at a value. If I just shoot it off into the abyss, it goes the distance that it would, but then eventually range hits zero and it does nothing. Okay, so now we need it to bounce. So we have a problem. We have to, when it hits the wall, it needs to redirect in another direction. Um, and this can be kind of confusing and difficult to do. So for example, if I have a ray coming in like this, the direction that it comes out needs to be like this, and it needs to be the exact amount that it came in. This is known as the incident angle, and I'll draw a little diagram out here. Okay, so the green is a wall, the red is the incoming line, and it's hitting like this, then the outcoming has to be at the exact same angle. So the angle between the, uh, from here to here, so like say this angle, right here has to be the same as this angle and vice versa on the inside. So you have to mirror the angles from the normal of the plane. The normal of the plane refers to um, a line that is completely perpendicular with the plane. So see this line coming out? It's normal to this vertical plane if I was to make it like that. Uh, yes, so about the normal to the plane, you invert the angle. And this sounds complicated, but really all it is, is just swap rotation. So you have a MBT called rotation, you just need to flip it and that's it. Um, now to dynamically flip it, you actually are gonna need an entity because it's hard to dynamically flip in commands. Um, you can try various rotated, but it's not gonna, it probably won't work out too easily. So what we need is an entity. So we're going to make an entity. So summon area effect cloud, which is the best entity because it takes the least data. Well maybe not the least but it's better than others uh anyway so uh we have tags and we'll just give it a tag called bounce now instead of playing as the player um we're going to change who is the executor of the raycast and uh, i'll come back into this later to help with like multiplayer stuff so execute as at e tag equals bounce run so now bounce is going to be the executor and we can do type equals area effect cloud just so that it's even more efficient of a selector and then kill this guy right after naturally it'll despawn a tick later but you don't want to have any issues if two people are shooting at the exact same time so we are going to summon it do the bounce raycast and then kill it and if another player shot at the exact same time it's going to do all these for me and then it will do all these for my buddy who was shot at the same time. So there will never be two of these area effect clouds at the same time. Now in loop, I now I'm playing as this guy. So we need to detect when we hit a wall. So we have to go execute if score percent range, and you can, you can actually limit it to range, but let's just do if block 0 0.25. So the block that we were about to go into is air and we'll just change it to instead of if we go to unless so if the block that we are going to go into is not air run function bounce raycast bounce okay so this will actually cause it to bounce um, now in the bounce we're going to do a lot of stuff here with that entity so at s equals the aec okay so we're going to scoreboard players remove percent bounce raycast one. So we're going to remove one from the bounce score. And this is actually important. So we're going to add if score percent bounce raycast matches one. And basically each time you bounce, you're going to remove one. And uh, when we begin, we set an amount of times the thing's allowed to bounce. So limiting it is always good. You don't want this thing to bounce a thousand times because it, that would be pretty bad. So you have two limits here and you can mess with these. You can change the number of bounce that you want. It's always good to have the variable available. So now we actually need to do the rotation. So if the plane you're going into, there, there's gonna be different rules. So if you're hitting a ceiling, you need to reflect the angle, but it's the vertical angle. If you're hitting a wall, you need to reflect the horizontal angle. Um, so we can do execute unless block uh, 0. Uh, 0. 0.25, but in the relative coordinates and in the X direction. So this, these will get us to where the next block is going to be that we didn't go into. 
these are going to get us into and we can really we really have to do like 3.5 or 0.5 will get us into what that block is so if we're here and the next block that is going to stop us was here let's say we're here and the next block that was going to stop us is over here which is in the positive extra negative x direction so then we basically go well we were using these to figure out when will we stop and now we're using these to figure out why did we stop so positive negative in the x direction will trigger it so again uh, we have these so we're going to have to say positive or negative direction in the x direction um, will have the same effect because they're just the same walls uh, the same directions they have the same normals so then we're going to do uh, store result entity oh let me add air here store result entity and this is where we're going to flip their uh, rotation that is horizontal so a uh, store result entity at s rotation at zero float is the value the type of uh, variable that is the rotation and negative one is going to be our scale which will flip it run data get entity at s rotation at zero so this will this will give us the rotation and then this will store it but negatively so if we add these two we should be able to bounce off of one wall because there's going to be three walls we need to account for. So let's go like that. And, and I forgot the final bit. So after you flip, you have to do execute rotated as at S run and you need to play the raycast again. So this is going to stop the raycast when you hit a wall and then you're gonna start it up again from there, but we're not restoring the range score. So the range will always constantly be going down and we're not restoring the bounce score. So the bounce will always be constantly going down. So one of the important things to do is to uh, TP the bounce guy, the initial bounce guy so that he has the same rotation as the player when they fire. So I just needed this TP thing here and that will make it so that it has the same rotation as the player when you fire. So now you're going to have it bouncing off the wall in the way that you would expect it to. So as the angle gets tighter, uh, it bounces back and goes down as well. But uh, in terms of pure horizontal components, it's bouncing exactly uh, as the way that you would expect it. So as I get closer, the angle gets wider and uh, you can see that nice ray right there. But we have a problem. We hit this wall and it doesn't do it. We hit the floor and it doesn't do it. And I'll just jump in the cage. All right. So with the floor, we need to do the same thing, but we need to invert it with the vertical rotation, which is just going to be one. So we just invert the vert vertical rotation here and move these into the Y position. So if the block above you or below you is the one that you actually hit, then invert it. So now if we go like that, it'll bounce back up. And if we go like that, it'll bounce back down. Now, here's the real tricky part. The, the, <laughs> the Z planes are actually tougher than you think. So I'm going to go ahead and go just put this and say, all right, on a Z plane, we are going to invert the same way that an X plane would. You would assume this is the case, but there is a problem with Minecraft. <laughs> so you're gonna see here, um, the, the ray actually does not does not do what you would expect it to. It does not work properly on uh, these Z areas. And that's mainly because uh, there's this thing that the game has called uh, their rotation is between negative 180 and positive 180. So I'm just going to give you guys the fix to this. Uh, we add something here called Z plane, an additional function. And this is for the special case of you're on the Z plane. Uh, and then for here, we're just going to do run function bounce raycast Z plane. This took me a little bit of time to figure out, but I kind of knew it was happening immediately because I have a lot of experience with this weird rotation set. So we're going to do scoreboard players set hashtag temp hashtag makes it invisible. So you don't actually have to see it raycast 180. Okay then execute store result hashtag temp one raycast run data get entity at s rotation rotation at zero with a scale of 10.0 uh, store result score and then execute 
store result entity at s rotation at zero float 0 0.1 so since we're moving it to a score we actually need to multiply the accuracy you could go by 100 if you're even more insane i mean we could do 100 here um, so this will scale it up doing this scale and this will scale it back down to the decimal range since scoreboards are integers then run scoreboard players operation hashtag temp minus equal uh raycast minus equals hashtag temp one raycast okay so what this does uh if you haven't already guessed is it does 180 minus rotation at zero and that's how it flips it because of this whole different range um you can't just inverse it you have to do 180 minus the rotation and when you do that it will give you the proper bounce in the z direction that you're looking for uh so yeah there you go the, the same bounces in the x direction uh okay and that's it so um that's why it's called quick p i mean it probably was a little longer than the other ones but let's go ahead and up the range to 500 and let's do 30 bounces and we can sit here and we can bounce all day <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness that is insane yeah so i mean if i go completely horizontal you're gonna see this thing bounce around a lot oh my goodness yeah that yeah there you go that is that is what i'm looking for uh so you can guess this will be the thumbnail <laughs> um but anyways guys that's pretty much it uh if you thought that that was useful leave a like maybe consider subscribing i think only five percent of you are subscribed um but anyways uh let me know what you want to see next this was actually a suggestion from somebody in one of my comments um, they wanted to know how to bounce the Raycast, and I was interested in trying it myself, uh, so I gave it a go, and uh, it was kind of fun. It was fun to do. I always like doing these little challenges. Um, now, I'll add a side note so that you can know this. Adding player keep trackability and tagging things is as simple as go into this loop function, add whatever hitbox you want, so execute if entity as as at e distance equals dot dot five like that would detect something i have other videos on raycasting hitboxes um, and the best kinds to use but you would just insert them into here somewhere um, and then to make sure who is who you would do uh, tag add us add uh executor and then tag add us remove executor and you know that in any of these functions at p tag equals executor is only one person and only the person who fired it um so that's why you just add a special tag before and after um you add it and then remove it later and then you know who is the one who started this thing those are my two little side notes other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace